It's spooky season, everybody. Happy Halloween Eve, or as other people like to call it, September. This is the time of year where I feel the most myself. Even though it's gonna be almost 30 degrees today, I'm getting into the spirit of things. I want some autumnal spooky goodness and I want it now. We're just gonna do it in 30 degree heat, which is why this tumbler is full of iced coffee. How cute is this though? I got this and these earrings at Michael's. Honestly, Michael's around Halloween season is just a great way to find pieces for my house that I can use year round. But today's video, we are still on the Pure X Rob Beauty Christie train. This is gonna be the last video in this series because I feel like I've gone through pretty much every shade in this palette, except for the ones that we are going to be using in this video. Today, we're going to finish off the series with a little basic to bold. For those of you who don't know what that is, usually in a palette potential series, I will do one video in the series where I try and make the most disparate looks I can imagine. That means I want to do something that is the most basic thing I can think of and contrast that with the most bold look I can come up with. And I smushed them together in one video because watching one dedicated video about a brown smoky eye is going to be boring. There's not much else to say about it, so I think we're just gonna hop right on in. So if that sounds like fun to you, then please keep on watching and let's get started. So let's get this party started with some primer. I think today's look's going to be the bold look, just because I really am not feeling neutral at all today. <laughs> I want something a bit dark, goth, a bit witchy. I'm just feeling the Halloween vibes, okay? I'm forcing Halloween upon myself to make me feel better. Halloween and fall just give me joy, and so I just need to embrace that for my own mental well-being, I'm sure a lot of you can relate. So I think we're gonna do a whole lot of purple. We're gonna get into the red, see if we can create a nice sort of winged out smoky moment, maybe with a big chunky black wing. I just want something to bring the drama, not necessarily be incredibly technical, which is pretty much every makeup look I do these days. Please don't roast me on that. So I think we're gonna start with Flavor Town, which is the one shade I don't think I really featured yet in this series. We're gonna make that happen today. We're dipping right into Flavor Town. I don't even think I've touched it yet. And I'm gonna start mapping out a little bit of a shape like I usually do. And let's see how this shakes out. Oh, this is fun. This is a fun shade. So I'm just kind of concentrating that above the crease to create this winged out shape. I'll take it down here as well. And this is gonna be what we blend the purple into, is this nice flaming Hot Cheetos Red, which I've actually never had. I've never had a flaming Hot Cheeto. Are they really as good as, uh, as people say they are? Leave that in the comments below. I don't know, I was just kind of feeling vampy today. I didn't wanna do anything that was pretty. Gosh, the one thing I can say about pretty much every shade in this palette is that they're so easy to just lay down. That took almost no time. And there's pigment just right off the hop. But they're also not a pain to blend out. This shade is no exception. Just looks uh, freaking great. I'm trying to keep this winged out shape a bit more contained than I normally do, just because I don't want to get all messy out here in this in this area. I will want to blend that out eventually. I just don't want to do that right this second. Okay, let's dip into Tribute here and start filling this in. It's so funny. Purple has never been my favorite color. I don't normally gravitate toward purple for whatever reason, but as I get older, I don't know what it is. I just suddenly like purple. It's very strange. Like it has never been my color of choice, but it's so funny. I've been kind of uprooting my entire island in Animal Crossing. My color scheme on the island used to be all black and red because when you're just starting out, black flowers are pretty easy to breed and red flowers you can just buy. However, I got really bored of that and I started wanting to introduce other hybrids, other colors of flowers. And for some reason, I ended up with purple being thrown into the mix, which is something I would never do. But I'm just naturally gravitating towards a purple color scheme. It's very weird and I, I'm not comfortable with it yet, but I'm just, I'm, I'm just gonna let it happen. These colors are also so easy to pack on. Like they can blend out, but you can also just pack it right onto the lid and you're not gonna have a problem. And I'm gonna try and get a really nice blend from the purple into the red. 
I think this is the first time we're experiencing some fallout happening on the cheek here. I really like that. I kind of like dig the simplicity of that. I'm just gonna add a little bit more flavor down to the edges. Let's finish up the lower lash line just to make sure it's all cohesive. So we're basically just making sure that the lower lash line connects to the top. And I think I might actually leave my inner corner open. Okay, and then let's add a little bit of tribute just underneath the lash line. See so if we can swipe that fallout away. Yeah, not bad. Let's get some liner happening. If you were curious as to what that horrible screeching noise is, it's the sound of shunting trains because there's a train yard underneath the building. Two hours later. Okay, I don't know when that stopped recording because I was literally holding my breath the entire time I was doing that. Let's add a little bit more purple at the bottom here. And then I think I'm actually gonna line everything in black just to add to the vampiness. And let's wiggle that into the lash line as well. All right, turned off the fan to stop myself from crying all this eyeliner off. And I'm just gonna smudge this black liner in the lash line just to get it nice and smoky. Let's take a little bit of tribute and smoke out some of that a little bit. Okay, I was gonna add white into here, but now I don't think that makes sense. So I think I actually might just take Cafe Disco and just run that underneath a little bit, but in a more smudgy way, kind of blending it into the colors. And I think to balance that, I will put it on my brow bone. Okay, I like that. I think that's fun. I'm going to do all of that on the other side, put on some lashes, and then we will come back and decide what kind of lipstick to wear with this. Oh Lord, I just realized that I hadn't turned my mic on for the last bit of this video. So let me recap you. The lashes I just put on are Likely Makeup's Hostel Honey. They're one of my all time favorites and I go back to them all the time. I decided to add a little bit of orange just on the inner third and the lower outer third. I don't know, I felt like orange and purple is a little bit more Halloween right now. And although I didn't wanna do a specifically Halloween look, I just felt like it was a missed opportunity. So I threw a bit of orange in there. And so now it's looking a bit weird and I think I can pull this off with the right blush lip combination, so just bear with me, okay? Let's move on to blush because I have no idea what to do yet with the lips. I feel like this is kind of a no-brainer, bringing back the Likely Makeup Cloud Blush Palette. Let's throw on some contortion to start with, probably a little bit higher up here. It's like every fall, like clockwork, I bring out this blush palette again and I am reborn. All right, and then let's take a little bit of circus and just concentrate that a little closer to the apple. Let's do some highlighter. I just picked this up. It is the Milk Flex Highlighter in the color Lit. This has been sitting in my Sephora wish list for months. I've only used it once before, but I have to tell you, it's kind of fire. Like if you wanna look wet, this is going to do that for you. It will take you to that place. I do kind of wish they carried a lighter shade. This is the lightest one they have, and it's just light enough that it works on me. However, if they had something just like one level up, I feel like that would be ideal for my complexion. Okay, it is freckle time. All right, the conundrum, that will be lips. Part of me wants to go totally neutral because there's just so many colors happening. I was thinking something like a gray should be kind of fun. We could also just do straight up purple. I was also thinking maybe doing like an ombre lip from purple to gray. I'm gonna do that. Do I have a purple liner? Okay, the closest thing I think I have is this Rimmel's Lasting Finish Thousand Kisses. This is in the shade Cherry Kiss. I don't know, let's give that a shot. This is already way too light, but that's okay. All right, let's fill in the outer edge with Undefeated, which is a Stunna Lip Paint by Fenty. Oh yeah. Let's try and clean that up just a tad. Well, I hope you guys like long videos from me because that's what this one's gonna be. To ombre that out, let's use Black Moon in Dusk. Let's just spray her down before I forget. 
she is done. I wash my hands of this look. I feel like this has taken me eons to finish. And where we finished is not exactly where I thought I would end up, but I don't hate it either. I rarely do anything other than a nude lip these days. It feels kind of foreign to me to have this really dark vampy lip, but I like it. The color combinations are interesting. I kind of wish that I had just gone with orange and purple when I realized a little too late that that was going to give me that Halloween-esque kind of spooky vibe. So I kind of wish that I had left the red all together. However, I'm glad I used it because it was the last colorful shade in the palette that I hadn't put in a video yet. So I am happy that I showcased it. However, I would love to do a real classic orange, purple, black, Halloween vampy smoky eye. So I might just do that anyway after the series is over for the Halloween season. And this purple is definitely one I would probably pick up just because it is so easy to use. We packed it on the lid and it was really, really opaque right off the hop. It's not patchy at all, and yet it blends smoothly into anything. For the bold side of the palette, I'm just really happy with the effortlessness of these formulas. They're just so easy to work with, and that's what you want with a colorful palette. Like, you don't wanna fight with it. This video is gonna be so long, so I need to stop talking. For the next look, we're gonna dive right back into the neutral side. All right, so I guess I will see you momentarily. All right, so it's a couple days later for me, and it's now not only swelteringly hot, it is also smoky. I mean, couldn't humanity just hold off on the whole world burning thing while there's also a plague happening? I mean, like, the last thing I want is for doomsday sayers to be proven right. All right, today is going to be the basic look, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I've been waffling. These two shades are the only two shades that I have not touched yet in this palette, and I'm still not feeling a basic Becky moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make something basic, but maybe still a little bit on the darker, witchier side, but we're gonna keep it really simple. I wanna be basic, but in my own spooky way. I've got like three fans going in the house right now, so if you hear a gentle humming, that's that's what it is. It's just so many fans. Let's just start right away and zoom you guys in and start putting on some eyeshadow and figuring it out as we go along. Okay, let's prime. I'm gonna start with Moo Point because I want that to be the focal point of the look. In fact, I wish I could just do a whole wash of Moo Point and not worry about You're Not My Real Dad because I just feel like, I don't know, I'm not feeling dark brown right now. I'm like, I'm just not. But I do wanna just take Moo Point and fluff the crap out of it all over the eye. I actually have been really looking forward to this shade. I love those dusty, mauve tones. I love just that. However, if you thought the fallout was bad in this palette before, this shade does take the cake on that. And I think just by itself, it looks great. I don't want to futz with it any more than that. I'm gonna take that under the lash line as well. It's still pretty light in tone, so it's gonna be a harder one to concentrate. I'm taking it pretty far down on the lower lash line. Just so pretty. I feel like if you had a skin tone that was a couple shades darker than mine. This would be definitely a different vibe. I feel like it's pigmented enough that it would still show up, but it would be quite light. I really wish I didn't have to incorporate the other shadow because I like it like it is. Ooh, I am, what? Am I orange? <laughs> Good one. If I am, well, that's too bad because jokes on me, I don't have a custom white balance. So just to use the absolute bare minimum of this shade as humanly possible, I'm just gonna take a little pencil brush and dip it into You're Not My Real Dad and use it as kind of a smoked out liner, but like just smudge it into the lash line just to give the eye a little bit more of a doe-eyed effect. I don't really want to wing it out or anything, just real soft like. And really just to darken the lashes, I'm gonna wiggle a little bit on the lower lash line as well. And I was going to use Golden Ticket as the inner corner for this look, but it's so cool tone that I think I'm actually gonna go back into Cafe Disco. That's kind of been my favorite of the two shimmers in this palette. I think it'll just pick up the cool pink mauve undertones better. All right, to finish this off, I'm going to take a dark brown liner and do the waterline. With that, I think I'm going to actually go back into You're Not My Real Dad and smoke out the lower lash line a little bit more, just so that it is not as 
stark. I'll leave that for now. I might smoke that out just a little bit more. Before that, I'm gonna do everything on the other side and then put on some lashes and see where we're at. All right, other side's I haven't put on lashes, oh my god. So, lashes are on. I ended up just throwing these back on. They're the lovely lashes from the collab. They're my new favorite go-to everyday lash. I love them so much. I love them with eyeshadow. I love them without eyeshadow. I love the shape of them, the curl, the length, the volume, the fluffiness. They're just, they're perfect. Luckily enough, I was able to get my hands on three more pairs. Shoppers Drug Mart, their website, still carries them. So, I would run and grab at least a couple pairs. I am in love with them. I'm going to wear them until they're dead. Really digging this look. I ended up smoking out the brown just a little bit more just to balance everything out and I'm really happy with where it is. Let's move on and do some blush. So I know I want everything to have a cooler more muted tone on my face today. Keeping it a little bit grungier. I feel like the only more mauve blushes I have are in the Blush Bazaar, which I know is so freaking old and no one has it anymore, but I'm sure Tarte makes a blush that is similar to these still. It's not like they're reinventing the wheel with their color schemes anyway, so I've I've got a feeling that you can probably find something very comparable to any of these. So let's take Authentic because that is the coolest one they have here in the bunch. Let's just start piling this on. I want to keep it kind of underneath the eye, kind of like a draping sort of moment, but also not being afraid to just kind of throw it everywhere on the face. I feel like the last look, I was too afraid to take it closer into the face and it ended up just kind of looking like contour. So I'm trying to mitigate that today. I would love to find a really dusty rose blush with a gray undertone. I think that would be so stunning all over the face. Even this is pulling a bit too pink for what I wanted. So I think I'm gonna combine it with a little bit of Cairo and see if I can tone it down a bit and make it a bit more taupey brown. I'm actually just gonna go back into the palette and take Moo Point and graze that starting from the lower lash line into the blush. Jordy's next blush palette idea should just be like a graveyard blush palette with like really cool toned, muted browns and mauves and grays. And then I will grab a little bit of ambient blush just for a little bit of shine on the cheeks. So to avoid going too warm toned again, I'm gonna take Flexitarian for highlight and really concentrate it just on the front and not take it all the way back because I don't wanna lose all this blending. And I think I'm gonna take Flexitarian on the brow bone. Okay, so I'm gonna throw on some freckles just because there's a fallout situation happening on my nose with this brown eyeshadow. And I kinda just need to camouflage it a little bit. We're just going to pretend it was completely intentional. I haven't busted out these in a while. They are the Noctex Liquid Lip Files. I love these. As a matte liquid lip, they are supremely comfortable. They come in three colors and they're all like super flattering nudes, warm, cool, and I feel like more people should know about them. I'm just gonna line my lips super quick. I'm gonna start off with the color Requiem. It's the deepest in tone, I think, of the three. And then I'm gonna take Lily's and fill in the rest and maybe do a bit of a blend as opposed to an ombre. Also, they smell like butterscotch pudding. Alrighty, let's spray her down. Oh my God, I almost forgot again. I turned off the fan to do my setting spray. My upper lip is already sweating. So I'm going to try and keep this outro succinct. So that is a wrap on the Pure X Raw Beauty Christie Palette Potential Series. This series was just so fun. Every look I did with this palette was a treat. You can really feel that a lot of love and care went into this palette. Every eyeshadow in this palette seems to be painstakingly crafted to perform optimally. It, it just, I don't know how much better this formula could possibly get. You want color payoff? It's got it. You want blendability? It's got it. You want hyperpigmentation? It's got it. It's got everything. And if you're a person who can see past 
the fallout situation, then this formula is just magical. It, it's so compact and so petite, yet it packs such a punch, which really is the essence, I think, to Raw Beauty Christie when you boil it down. Just the sheer amount of versatility we were able to achieve is staggering. There are much larger palettes that I've worked with on this channel that have far less versatility and far fewer options. And I'm just kind of sad that so many people weren't able to get their hands on it because I would recommend this as a starter palette for pretty much anyone. The only thing it's missing is that black and I'm pretty sure that most people who own an eyeshadow palette probably have a black eyeshadow in that palette. If this was the only palette you were ever gonna purchase in your entire life, the only thing missing from it is a black eyeshadow. I mean, sure, there are shades in here that I would prefer to swap out with other things. You're not my real dad, a dark chocolatey brown. Eh, I mean, I've seen it before. It's not revolutionary. I really would have actually liked to have seen something just a step down from Moo Point. After working with Moo Point and loving it so much, I do kind of wish there was just something a little deeper than that one to be able to work within that color palette just a little bit more. Other than that, this is a staple item. I am so happy I I have it, I'm going to be using it forever and ever. I still have no idea which look is my favorite. I love this one in particular right now just because it's on my face and I'm feeling super pretty. So I don't know, which one is your favorite? Comment down below which look out of this palette potential series did you love the most? All right, let's just quickly rattle off the spiel. This video is already far too long. Here are the many ways that you can help out my channel. You can give this video a thumbs up. You can comment down below what you thought of everything. You can subscribe. Any engagement is just a huge help for this channel in general. You can follow me on other social media. I will leave those right there. If you wanna know more about my process and my thoughts and a little bit more of behind the scenes, you can go check out the Patreon link down below. And I'm just gonna urge all of my US subscribers, anyone living in the United States right now, I, I'm pleading with you, I'm begging with you, please go vote. Please go vote and, and don't vote for Trump. That's kind of a non-starter. Just don't, don't do it. That's all I gotta say to you today. Please, for the love of God, go vote. From what it sounds like, they are making it incredibly difficult for people to vote right now, especially in the middle of a pandemic. And I can only imagine how terrified you guys must be. I can only just say that we're we're watching and we're here and we're and we're just as scared as you are. Please, for the love of democracy, go vote. All right, folks, that is it from me. Please stay safe, stay sane, wash your hands, wear a mask, Black Lives Matter, register to vote, all the things. Let's prove those doomsday sayers wrong. Am I right? And above all else, please be kind and be generous, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>